why don't I start um, with just kind of contextualizing the issue that I think we're all facing. Um, we're living in a period uh, characterized by massive rapid change and upheaval. It's a period where it almost feels like history is being written in real time and it's being recorded in real time. In many ways, it's almost hard to remember the world before COVID, which was just six months ago or before the current civil unrest in our cities. And honestly, it might be hard right now to think beyond that at the moment. But both of these historical events are playing out against the backdrop of something else, something that we cannot and just must not lose sight of, something that affects every citizen of every nation of the world and will for years, decades, generations, and even centuries to come. It's a hugely consequential global catastrophe that will remake our society over the next decade. And that something is the climate crisis. These photos are from the global climate strike, which took place one year ago this week. In the United States, there were a thousand distinct strike events in all 50 states and every US territory. But this wasn't a, a national event, it was a global one. 7.6 million people participated in 150 cities worldwide. And it's rare to see such broad social, political, and economic consensus around a single issue. Even rarer still to see that consensus manifest itself so globally. So why all the outrage? And I would say simply put, it's because climate change is wreaking havoc on our planet. It's destroying our homes, dislocating families, unsettling the world, and it's literally setting the world on fire. Wildfire activity throughout the world has been increasing dramatically as conditions become hotter and drier due to climate change. And to be clear, this is happening right now. These photos are from the last month or so, and, and there are hundreds of others. And this one, this is from yesterday. Many of you are familiar with the Meadowood Resort in Northern California. This is the Meadowood Resort and it's yesterday. But this recent uptick in fires isn't an anomaly, it's a trend. This graph is pretty accurate. The acres burned by US wildfires are trending up and to the right. The most all occurred in the last millennium and things are getting worse. And without change, the most devastating years are all ahead of us. The devastation can obviously come in increasing wildfire act. Uh, global climate change panel indicates that we should anticipate continually rising sea temperatures, disruptive precipitation patterns, more droughts, more heat waves, more fires, more hurricanes, more longer hurricane seasons, a sea level rise of one to eight feet by 2100 an ice-free Arctic, forced migrations. I mean, this list goes on and on. The threat is real and it's imminent. Keep in mind, none of this information is a secret. Al Gore literally made a documentary about this 15 years ago, but finally, it, it started to feel like the world is paying attention and now the world wants action. And now the world is demanding accountability. And so a good question to ask is, who should be held accountable? Which industries, which companies, which people? And when you think about that, you can ask yourself, is it transportation? Is it mining? Is it fracking? Is it food production? Is it methane from cows? What we've all heard. And while all of these are in fact culprits in the global environmental crisis, they are not the biggest culprit. So who is? And I have some pretty sobering news that undesirable distinction belongs to the real estate industry. The real estate industry is the single largest contributor to climate change. And to be honest, that is so non-intuitive for most people, but it's true. The, the real estate industry is the climate change culprit that's been hiding in plain sight. It's all around us. And the statistics themselves are staggering. The real estate industry uses 40% of all global energy and emits 30 to 40% of all greenhouse gases. This is more than manufacturing, transportation, food production, single use plastics, or any other sector you might think, or what you may believe are the real climate villains. It's honestly hard to overstate 
the significance of the real estate industry's contribution to the global climate crisis. And some of the real estate industry's most important stakeholders have started to notice its responsibility here. Climate, climate accountability is going to hit the real estate industry like a ton of bricks. And to be honest, it's already started, including from capital markets. Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, wrote a letter to CEOs at the beginning of the year that implored capital allocators to undergo a fundamental shift in the way they evaluated investment opportunities, a shift towards swift, substantial climate action. A group of 500 investors representing $47 trillion of investments has committed to net carbon zero portfolios by 2050. Capital markets are appropriately demanding more from real estate companies, more accountability for their role in the climate crisis. And when you think about the downstream financial implications of this for the real estate industry, which is a cost of capital business, it's profound. Demand for real estate accountability in the climate crisis is also coming from regulators in cities like Los Angeles and New York. New legislation has been passed pertaining specifically to building emissions with calls for significant reductions over the next 10 years and zero emissions by 2050. And while climate action at the federal level has slowed over the last four years, at the local level, 407 mayors across the nation have committed to adopt, honor, and withhold the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement. The number of regional governments with carbon neutrality laws for real estate has climbed from 11 to 101 just in 2020. Cities and local regulators are demanding, demanding the real estate industry clean up and they want them to do so now. And you have to ask yourself, well, why are regulators so willing to put aggressive taxes enforcing carbon neutrality in their jurisdictions? And it's because unlike other industries, you cannot move a building to a more favorable jurisdiction. The industry doesn't travel that well. It is an industry based in place. And so it is very subject to local regulations. And the last constituent is consumers and the consumer public. They are demanding accountability from the real estate industry as well. Premier tenants, the, the largest users of real estate, are demanding sustainability from their suppliers, including their landlords, in an effort to better manage their own decarbonization efforts. This is changing the demand for commercial space. I mean, there's a reason why Greta Thunberg was named Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 2019. The world is increasingly recognizing the need for climate action. For the public, for tenants, and for their employees, this is a non-negotiable issue. Here's an example. Amazon has very publicly committed to decarbonizing. What you might not also realize is that means they're forcing their suppliers to decarbonize too. And one of Amazon's biggest suppliers, the real estate industry data centers, warehouses, offices, retail stores. If you're a landlord to Amazon, you've been put on notice. Amazon might be one of the first major tenants to set these standards, but they will not be the last. Pretty soon, if you're not carbon neutral as a real estate owner, you will not be selling space anymore. So with pressure for climate action coming from all angles, how have we as an industry responded? And it's with a lot of this. It's things like 100 page glossy sustainability reports and beautiful sustainability landing pages and awards and credentials that no one has heard of and are nearly impossible to verify. And, and look, we've decided to take the logos out here, but you could just look at any real estate company and you will see the same thing. It's a lot, it looks like a lot. And when you look at these things, they all look good right? They sound good. Uh, it kind of seems like the real estate industry is doing its part, but something seems off. And you have to ask yourself, what's behind these press releases, these web pages, these glossy annual reports? And I have a question, which is, where is the money? If you look at these reports, you see a lot of words and you see a lot of words on web pages but there's one thing that is glaringly absent and it's dollar signs. You don't see a lot of dollar signs. Look, do it right now on your phones. You won't see a lot of dollar signs. 
So let, let me come from let me come at this issue from a different angle. You know, Bill Gates described the challenge of decarbon decarbonizing our economy as the moonshot of our time. Landing humans on the moon by the end of 1969 required the most sudden burst of technological creativity ever. It was the, the largest mobilization of dollars, resources, and human capital ever made by any nation in peacetime. Landing on the moon cost so much because it was a bold, audacious, and seemingly impossible goal. And here's the thing, solving the climate crisis is no different. It will require a burst of technological activity, unlike anything we've ever seen, and it will require to actually happen. Now, here's some positive news. Other industries are heating the 500 companies have made a public commitment that by 2030, they will be carbon neutral using 100% renewable power. And this includes large financial institutions like Goldman Sachs and Capital One, huge technology companies like Alphabet, Microsoft, and Sony, car manufacturers like Toyota and Volkswagen. So what's the real estate industry's plan? What's our roadmap to zero? How do we get from where we are today, which is the biggest environmental offender with this gigantic target to zero emissions buildings? Where should our money go? Well, we know where a lot of the money is going and it's going to carbon offsets. Carbon offsets today represent a $120 billion industry. And when you talk to real estate companies, you quickly learn they're buying a lot of these. And why? And because I quote, because the technology isn't developed enough because they literally have to do so. And we agree today it's not possible. But if you're looking at this issue as a today, I think you're missing the forest from the trees. And here's why. Carbon offsets are temporary solutions. They are a Band-Aid. They, they don't solve the root problem. They're like running in place, one step forward, one step back. And in the context of the most highly responsible industry on earth for the climate crisis, they're a bridge to nowhere if you don't also invest in the technology that can actually help the real estate industry decarbonize. And so I, I pull up this image because if you were driving behind this Hummer, would you think this driver was doing his or her part to prevent climate change? Would you give them a pass on their car, their car choice if they had purchased the commensurate amount of offsets to offset the Hummer's emissions? Of course not. And so when you see something like this, why would you view this any differently, especially if it's achieved with offsets? It's the same thing. And, and I wanna be clear, carbon offsets are not a bad thing but they don't solve the problem around the real estate industry's emissions. And I would say worse, they seem to be enabling the industry to avoid the real problem, that without significant investments into climate technology, the real estate industry will never achieve zero carbon emissions. That, that problem is not going anywhere. And also to its credit, the real estate industry spends billions of dollars on retrofitting and green bonds and deployments of existing technology at their assets. But deploying technology isn't the same thing as investing in it. And a lot of real estate owners get that wrong. To be totally candid, the fact that not enough investment has gone into climate tech from the real estate industry is why the real estate industry so heavily on offsets right now. It's why they must buy so many offsets in the first place. And it's why retrofitting is so expensive right now. This is what happens when you underinvest in technology. This is the result. Not to mention the fact the UN only condones the use of offsets through 2030, which means that this industry, the real estate industry, has 10 years to find a suitable replacement for offsets if they want to truly get to net zero. 10 years. 10 years to solve a problem that seems nearly insurmountable. 10 years to make up for more than a decade of inaction and lost time. And trust me when I say that we are in this situation precisely because the real estate industry has not invested in climate tech, the climate tech to dig the industry out of the technological hole it is in right now. 
The real estate industry is at least a decade behind in the R&D and investment that other sectors of the economy have been charging ahead with. And the hard news and the news I've learned is that the real estate industry has no plan, no real roadmap to get to true net zero for one simple reason. Because we as an industry have systemically underfunded the research and, and development required to get there. We have systematically underfunded the climate tech that's required. So the next question is, what is it going to take? Well, according to Morgan Stanley economists, analysts, and strategists, decarbonizing our economy will require 50 trillion of investment into decarbonization technologies. And that means that the industries that pollute need to invest trillions of dollars into climate tech that will help them not pollute. Based on its share of emissions, the real estate industry would need to invest about $15 trillion into climate tech. And other industries and other companies are actually doing this. Companies like Microsoft, Unilever, and Amazon, they use carbon offsets today. But Microsoft also launched a billion-dollar climate innovation fund. Unilever also launched a billion-dollar climate tech fund. Amazon launched a $2 billion climate pledge fund. And Jeff Bezos personally, personally committed $10 billion himself to climate tech. These organizations understand that the only long-term solution to decarbonization involves investment into climate tech. They are literally putting their money where their mouth is. And so how much has the real estate industry invested into climate tech? How close are we to hitting that $50 trillion number that's required? How close is the real estate industry to hitting the $15 trillion proportionate share that's theirs of that? Well, we're pretty far off. Real estate firms have invested less than $100 million into climate tech over the last 10 years. And that is shocking. It should be shocking. And I want to contextualize this number a little bit and to put it into perspective for you. The real estate industry has invested $94.6 million into climate tech over the last 10 years. And that represents 9.4% of Microsoft's commitment, 4.7% of Amazon's commitment, 0.9% of Jeff Bezos's personal commitment, and 0.0002% of Morgan Stanley's estimate for a zero carbon economy by 2050. I mean, it's just shockingly low. And when you look at, at this page, th there's just too many zeros to even, to, to even go through this. $94 million is practically nothing for the real estate industry. And again, I am not talking about how much the industry spends on offsets or retrofitting or green bonds. That is not the problem. The problem is the failure to invest in climate tech. That underinvestment into climate tech is why we need to spend so much money on those things in the first place. So yet yeah, we are behind where we need to be as an industry. And it really is time for us to get serious about investing into the climate tech that will help our industry decarbonize. So let's lean into this. Let's not let capital markets or regulators or activist tenants dictate our path forward. Let's tackle this moonshot head on. Let's do the work. Let's, let's make up for lost decades of technological development. Let's get together as an industry and invest in the science, invest in the engineers, invest in the innovators. They're going to help us get to true carbon zero through climate tech. And amid the offsets and gaming ESG scores and various certifications and glossy reports, it feels like the real estate industry has really taken its eye off the ball. I mean, these things give the illusion of progress without actually addressing the fundamental issue that we have spent the last decade not investing in the technology to truly decarbonize our industry. And as the spotlight swings towards the real estate industry, and we're being called out for our culpability in the climate crisis, it can almost feel that because of this, we're, we're stuck. And so what I try to think about is how do we unstuck ourselves? How do we unstick ourselves? And the answer is by investing in climate tech 
and doing that now, right now. And when I say we, I want to be clear, I mean real estate companies themselves, just like they are now with PropTech. And this will require real estate companies to reconceptualize what it means to be a real estate company. Because you can assuredly expect real estate companies to say, to say things like, I'm a real estate company. I don't invest in climate tech. And while that seems like a reasonable answer, I guess what I'd ask is, is that a good enough answer today? And, and to be honest, it reminds me of when I started Fifth Wall. And when real estate companies would say early on in our pitch meetings, I'm a real estate company. I don't invest in prop tech. And what I said is, well, that's one way to be on the wrong side of history with a very hard, <laughs> immovable conviction that because you haven't done something before, it can't be right or it can't be the future. And now Fifth Wall has gone on to raise over a billion dollars from these same real estate companies to do exactly that, to invest in tech. And this has to happen all over again with climate tech. Exactly what happened in prop tech. It's exactly why this topic is so fitting for this conference. Real estate companies have to invest in climate tech. They have to do something different than what they've always done if they want to be on the right side of history again. It will again require billions of dollars into climate tech from real estate investors, from real estate investors. The answer of I'm a real estate company, uh, I, I will, it will no longer be good enough anymore for the public, for capital markets, for tenants, for mayors. Real estate owners will have to find a way to reconceptualize what they do as an industry which is why obviously when we started our climate tech fund, this was our goal. I saw that $94 million number and I knew it was way too low. We speak to real estate corporations every day and we know that there is no plan right now to invest in climate tech. There's no coordinated plan and there's no individual company level plan. We want to invest in this sector, in this sector both because we want to reduce our industry's negative contributions but also because it's a massive opportunity. So to summarize all of this, I would just leave it at this. In 2020, real estate companies need to invest in climate tech. They need to do this even though they've never done it before. They need to do it even though it's not what they've previously done as real estate companies. And all of us should be asking them, why are you not doing it?